Last episode, I plumbed the depth of the Austin comedy scene to see if I could find happiness. I am right. My comedy is good. I didn't. This episode, I'll be taking on the cities of San Antonio, Houston, Fort Worth, and Dallas to see if I can survive the open mic comedy scene of the Texas Triangle. My goal was to have a typical local comedy experience. I ended up getting almost the opposite of that. Heading down to San Antonio! My plan to do two mics was quickly thwarted by the soap opera playing out on the San Antonio comedy Facebook group. That left one place which wasn't answering my phone calls or my Facebook messages. I had no real confirmation that this place was open, but it was my only option. Because I wasn't sure what the traffic would be like and my paranoia, I ended up getting to the venue several hours early. Which was a good thing because the GPS didn't bring me to the exact location and the sign was almost completely faded out, so I had a little trouble finding it. To make matters worse, when I tried to go inside, everything was completely dark, the door was locked, but the hours on their website and their door said they should be open. Also, I couldn't help seeing all the felony notice, don't bring guns, don't smoke, must be over 21, wear masks, COVID warnings, all these very unfriendly warning signs that really made me feel unwelcome on their door. I went back to my car and tried to call them on and off every 10 minutes for the better part of an hour, till finally I got through. I just called them, they said they moved it back an hour. For the next hour, I drifted in and out of sleep in the back seat of my car. Am I gonna get robbed? I don't know what the hell's going on. There's people over there. I think there was a church in the same parking lot. Just a logo that kind of looks like a cross. So I have a feeling it's some like religious organization, possibly a cult. <laughs> These two guys just parked their car, left the lights on, left the door open, and just walked away from it. Are they coming back? I feel like my mind's being fucked up right now. Which just made things weirder. Check that out. That says open. The owners of the bar were going for an 80s aesthetic, I think. Also, it was almost completely empty right up till the show was ready to start. Then, right at the last minute, a young musician who was performing his newly recorded album live for the first time came in and brought what I think was his sister and a bunch of her friends who brought a strong bachelorette party type vibe. All right, what about James? As you. Are you a comedian? You're funny? Allegedly. Well, you've got a crowd, so get on up here. Let's go. I hope they had fun. I know I did. Are you guys celebrating something? What's going on over here? You are having too much fun. Uh, you mentioned OnlyFans earlier. Are you guys on OnlyFans? They are? No, for now. Even though this might not be the typical San Antonio comedy experience. I'm glad I had it. The only thing interesting about the drive to Houston were the chickens in the parking lot of the rest stop. I got to the bar early and I was excited to see a real life cowboy in the wild. And by that I just mean someone who wore a cowboy hat seriously. <laughs> I was just a little too fascinated by this, so I asked one of the locals how common it is to see people wearing cowboy hats. It's not uncommon, like it's not weird. They had the suit, they, it just their clothes looked expensive. They just wore it, if you know what I mean. Like they just owned it. Thanks for not letting me down, Texas. 
When the show starts, the host almost immediately gets into it with a cowboy. What are you doing here, sir? Which I suppose a lot of us, with this schadenfreude in our hearts, were kind of waiting for this to happen. Like, we wanted this to happen. Apparently, wearing a cowboy hat is a very Latino fashion choice, and the host also happened to be Latino, so he decided to turn his time on stage into a Latino off with the cowboy. However, the cowboy was just out with his girl trying to have a good time, being harassed by an open micer about how Latino is he wasn't part of his plan. It's all over by the time I go up, so I just have fun. Before I leave Houston, I hit up one more venue, which was a jazz club that happened to be really nice. It had leather seats, professional lighting. We were in a room with like a lit up wine cellar and very nice looking paintings of famous jazz musicians on the wall. I don't know if it was a coincidence or oil money, but both venues that I went to for my one night in Houston were really nice, like much nicer than the more going out of business vibe that a lot of the open mic venues in Philadelphia have. Usually there are shitholes that will let you do an open mic in hopes that will bring some meager business to the failing establishment. There's maybe not as much things to say about Houston other than the fact that Houston's kind of my favorite city so far. The scene just seemed the biggest out of all the cities in Texas. The amount of comedians and the different types of comedians and the quality of comedians just seemed bigger than all the other cities, which does make sense. This is the biggest city in Texas. The vibe just was the closest to the East Coast vibe that I'm used to and that I like. I chose to do this open mic in Fort Worth because after it was over, I could drive to Dallas and do the open mic that I really wanted to do in Dallas. I can't say I gave Fort Worth a fair shot and my experience reflects that. I would describe this open mic as a typical low quality open mic. Fantastic, give it up to yourselves for coming out. Support live local comedy. Not because the comedians weren't good or the host didn't care or put a lot of effort into the product, they did. The issue was the location just wasn't good. It was in the middle of a busy burger, biscuits and brew place where most of the clientele we're sitting at the bar across the way, just watching TV that was left on the whole time. Also, during the performances, the kitchen would announce which orders were done over the loudspeaker, so that caused some interruptions to sets. Also, the comedians were performing right next to several different claw machines and skee ball machines that would occasionally blink and make noises. which didn't add to a great performing experience. All the comedians were just waiting for their set to be done so they could drive to that other open mic in Dallas where they all really wanted to be, which led to a not so great performing atmosphere, which I apologize I was part of because when my set was over, I got in my car and drove to Dallas. Whereas the Fort Worth skyline reminded me of a Christmas village, the Dallas skyline reminded me of a casino town. I'm not sure if that has any relations to the personalities of the two towns, but I just thought it was interesting. I was excited about Dallas because it was the first club open mic that I was going to be doing in Texas. And if you're hoping for petty gatekeeping and club politics, there's plenty of that. <laughs> I got there early, but the lobby was already filled up with comedians, something that just made me very nervous. I also didn't really do much filming because this club atmosphere made me nervous. I didn't know any of these people and I just didn't feel comfortable filming. I did have two goals for this night though. Number one was do well on stage. Easy enough. Uh, how much time do I have left? Number two, try and get up at a reasonable time because the open mic starts at 10.30 and I have a three hour drive back. So if I go up at one in the morning, I'm not getting home till four in the morning. Here's the thing though, asking to go up early at an open mic can be a big ask. Some open mics are pretty chill about where they put you on the list. 
but some treat it as like a measurement of where you stand on the social and political hierarchy, which is usually determined by several factors. How good you are as a comedian, how liked and popular you are, how many rooms you book, how long you've been doing it, how you've paid your dues, how respected are you. And me, coming in from out of town, knowing no one, am naturally going to be at the bottom of that hierarchy. So my job for tonight is try and climb up that hierarchy. I make some conversation with the guy signing up people at the door. I say, hey, so how does the list work? How late does this open mic go? And he immediately gets into the, no offense, but I've never seen you before. I didn't even ask to go up early at this point, so I quickly stopped the conversation with him because I wasn't getting anywhere. My next move was to introduce myself to someone else working the desk in front of someone who I had figured out was the manager and was probably going to be in charge of everything. And I asked the person working the desk, hey, while the show is finishing, can I like go in the back and watch it? The manager immediately jumps in, which I hoped he would, and said, uh, it's an independently produced show, so I can't just let you in but if I make you a volunteer you can go and usher people and just sit in the back and help us clean up afterwards. Now I don't feel good about giving comedy clubs free service industry labor but tonight my instincts were telling me that this was probably going to help me climb up that list so I said yes and they deputized me as a volunteer brought me in the back of the showroom and you know who was in the back of the showroom? The Mr. No offense but I've never seen before. Turns out he was a volunteer just like I was now. So now we were on the same level and he immediately started treating me like we are on the same level. He extends his hand and said, I'm sorry, what's your name again? And he starts talking about comedy and I start talking about comedy to him. And I was like, isn't this interesting? I watched the rest of the show, I helped clear off the tables, and afterwards one of the volunteers took me around and introduced me to everyone, which was really amazing and really nice. And then he found out that I was only there for one night. He thought I was moving to that city permanently. He was really embarrassed for being so open and warm to me. I assured him, you shouldn't be embarrassed. That was really nice. I really appreciated it. Your kindness did not go to waste on me. After that, all of the volunteers and the managers kind of hung out in the kitchen while the manager was making the list and he asked me hey are you funny and I was doing something else so I half heard him so then he asked again hey are you funny And I didn't know how to answer that. I didn't say right away, yeah, I'm funny. I just was like, you know, I've been doing this for four years. I'm really serious about this. Then he asked me, do you work? And I don't know how to answer that. I didn't know how to answer that. I probably should have said yes. I get it put on independent shows where I get paid money sometimes, hundreds of dollars over the course of a year. But I just didn't know what the correct response was. Maybe I should have like said like, yes, I've opened for national headliner such as X, Y, and Z, he ended up putting me 10th on the list. I ended up going 15th because five people bumped me. I started the three-hour drive home at 11.58. We're going to get home at 3 a.m. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate everyone who's coming on this journey with me. Don't be afraid to talk to me in the comments, share your experiences, let me know what kind of ideas you have. I want to thank everyone for the overwhelming response to the Austin episode. That was really amazing. I wasn't expecting that. I read every single comment, the positive ones, the negative ones. I really appreciate all the feedback, except for the commenters that tell me to quit comedy, but everything else was great. Regarding my last episode about suicide, I didn't get as much response, but the response I did get was really amazing. Everyone who reached out to me personally to share your story, I was really touched, and I just want to thank you.